in 2026, the year in which most of the new Republican uh, legislation, tax legislation, would start having an effect, that's the first year in which all members of the baby boom generation, including the younger, the youngest, will be eligible to draw Social Security retirement benefits. It's also the year which the oldest baby boomer will turn 80. So now what we're looking for is, and I agree with Mr. Reed and those who brought this up, what are you going to cut in order to make up for what you've done? It's pretty bad to listen to both sides. Well, we start by cutting Social Security. That's already been proposed, Medicare. Medicaid, that's already been done. So, here we have Caddyshack 2, Weekend at Bernie's 2, Jaws, The Revenge. The sequel is never as good as the original. The original sucked. In this case, in this case, I sure hope this tax scam 2 is just as popular as the first one. 34% popularity. I can't imagine anyone in the movie business backing a sequel to such a flop. Consider the headline. Fox News poll. Voters like Obamacare more than the GOP tax cuts. I mean, even guys and gals on our side find that funny to even say. That's right, a majority of all Americans now approve the Affordable Care Act. Let that sink in a minute. Maybe that's why New Jersey Republican Leonard Lance last week called this new attempt an ex exercise in futility. He's not the only one. Another headline from the week, Republicans consider dropping second phase of tax cuts after the backlash of salt. So why exactly are my friends on the other side bringing up this bill? What problem is this tax bill trying to solve? Consider the original tax scam. Way back in January, the GOP saw that corporate profits were at historic highs. And they concluded, not high enough. We need to shower them with lavish tax breaks. They came in, they saw that the middle class families were struggling with health care, housing costs, and said, let's make health insurance costlier. Let's make homeowners pay more taxes by eviscerating the individual mandate and capping the social deduction, which goes back to the Civil War, not the code. You're wrong. And now they see how unpopular the first go at the tax cuts were. So let's do more of the same. But why would this time be any different? Paul Ryan and the president said when they passed the tax scam, that the average family's wage and salary would go up by $4,000. He said it. I didn't. Wages are down for most workers. Only about 1% of workers are getting a wage increase. The Republicans only come up with 4,000 based on the flawed assumption that workers would successfully bargain for a bigger share of profits from corporate productivity. But that hasn't happened for 40 years. Republicans have waged an all-out war on labor unions, collective bargaining rights. What power do workers have to bargain for higher pay? Official data shows that workers' wages are flat or even slightly down in real terms over the last year. I have all backup information since you've asked me that a couple of times, if you want it. While corporations reap historic profits, their gains have not trickled down to regular workers. In fact, this tax bill has only made it harder for them to get ahead. Companies aren't investing in employees or innovation. Another headline, Trump tax cuts have no effect on most businesses' hiring plans. Corporations are spending 101 times as much on shareholder bonuses as they are on workers' bonuses and wages. Telling us to wait, telling workers to wait. They didn't raise wages. They simply passed the tax cuts by the U.S. Treasury to their wealthy shareholder pockets. 
I'm afraid the sequel is just more of the same failed trickle-down economics that has never worked before. In fact, I'd rather go see Weekend for, uh, Bernie again than watch this and read this sequel. We have real urgent problems facing working people Gentlemen's in this time country, Mr. Chairman. Expired. And I thank you for your indulgence. Thank you, Mr. Pascrell. I will 